Hello everyone and welcome to Under the Canopy, presented by Pro Health Physicians, a part of Optum Care with additional support by Liberty Bank. This immersive exhibition, open for a limited time at the Connecticut Science Center, explores the most diverse ecosystem on our planet, our rainforest and the amazing creatures who call it home. While the exhibition features over a dozen animals from all over the world, today I am joined by one of the wildlife educators who has brought a very special guest with them for us to learn more about. Let's go see who they have. Hi everyone, I'm with Alex, our wildlife educator here under the canopy. Um, Alex, who do you have with us today? Uh, this is our friend Cheeks. He is a red tegu. I can tell why you might call him Cheeks. He's very adorable. Where would he be from? Um, in the wild, they are found in South America, in uh, the countries of uh, Argentina and Paraguay. Fascinating. So I have to ask, it's one of my biggest burning questions is, he, I know he's named Cheeks probably because of his cheeks. Why does he have such big cheeks? So that's a great question. Uh, so these big cheeks here are actually something called his jowls. And uh, since he's a male, they're really, really big to help um, him identify as a male to the females, but also other potential male competitors. Uh, so how old is our friend Cheeks? Um, Cheeks, we actually don't know his age. We do know that he is an adult male, uh, but since he's a rescue, he used to be somebody's pet. We don't have a date of birth on him. So he could be, you know, just a few years old to well over a decade. So you rescue most of your animals? A lot of our animals are rescued, yeah. We um, like to um, think about animals that are in human care that need our help and teach about responsible pet ownership. So uh, animals like this can be quite difficult to care of, which is not something most people realize right away. They may look cool, but it's quite the commitment. So we like to teach people about that and uh, uh, help rescue the animals that, that need it. So if we're big fans of these animals, it's not a good thing to have them in our house, but what can we do to help them survive in the wild maybe? Yeah, so there's a lot that we can do even though they live far away from us. Um, the number one thing is learn about them as much as possible. If you know what an animal needs, then you can be in a better position to help them. So for these mm -hmm. guys, they live in uh, grasslands and open woodland, so helping protect uh, those environments, wherever you may be, even if it's uh, here in North America, is a really good first step. Um, they are uh, uh, threatened by people hunting them for their skin. So, of course, not buying tegu skin products mm -hmm. is a really uh, good way to do it. Although we're not quite sure what their status of conservation is in the wild at this time. Okay. Um, what is Cheek's favorite foods? So Cheeks is actually an omnivore, which means he has a lot of favorite foods. Mm -hmm. So they eat a lot of plant matter in the wild, um, a lot of uh, fruit, flowers, veggies, um, and some insect protein as well. Sometimes uh, some small mammals even if they get the chance. Ooh, very yummy. Um, I'm curious, I, you can tell he's walking around and he's doing his little lizard tongue thing. Could you yeah. tell us a little bit about why he might be flicking his tongue out? Yeah, so just like snakes, a lot of lizards like this will use their tongue to identify um, what is around them. So that tongue helps pick up particles in the air and it tells his brain what's over there, what's over here, what's near me, what's far away. So it helps him find his food, mm -hmm. stay away from predators, all that good stuff. And uh, that was a big smack from the tail. Um, I actually have a little question. You may see some things on his tail right now. Do you want to talk about what's going on here? Yeah, so like a lot of reptiles, like lizards and snakes, they uh, shed their skin. Now that's something a lot of animals with mm -hmm. skin do, including us, although we tend to flake off in teeny little bits. Lizards will shed off big, big parts of their skin, big patches, uh, sort of one at a time as uh, the old skin on top dies and the new skin comes out from underneath. Awesome. Well, he looks pretty handsome underneath. You can see all the new yes. red color. So uh, I've noticed like, he has a really, really long tail. So what do you think he uses it for? Yeah, so his tail is quite big. So even though they are really, really good at walking around on land, they're also quite good in the water. So this tail helps him propel himself through um, bodies of water. So they can swim. Awesome. Yeah. Even though he doesn't have webbed toes, I, I see he's got some long fingers. He does. Yeah, the long fingers help him grip the soil for him to walk around on land, and that nice, big, powerful tail help uh, him swim in the water. <laughs> you like to hide behind me, don't you? Yeah. Um, so he, he looks kind of like 
not super intimidating. How, how would he protect himself? Well, there's a few ways. Uh, hiding is usually yeah. their number one defense, like a lot of animals. Um, he is fairly big as far as lizards go, so that does help him out quite a bit. Um, but the red collar is also thought to maybe trick predators into thinking he might be dangerous or poisonous or toxic in some way. Mm -hmm. Tegus are actually considered to be quite intelligent. Um, they are able to um, socialize pretty well with human beings. So the people who do have them as pets and care for them properly um, do treat them almost like dogs. They have mm -hmm. uh, favorite activities, favorite foods, personalities, that sort of thing. Well, thanks so much, Alex, and thank you all for joining us. Um, if you want to come meet Cheeks here under the canopy, you can come visit us at the Connecticut Science Center and our exhibition here um, until Labor Day. So he's going to be here all throughout the summer. So thanks and come see us sometime soon. Thank you all for joining us today and be sure to follow along on all of the Science Center's social media to not miss any of our upcoming animal encounters as we explore more animals who live under the canopy.